Hi everybody, so welcome to the task 1.9 video, which is the ninth task of module one for math one. In today's video, we're gonna continue talking about the same two learning targets that we've been working on for the previous three tasks, only today we're gonna try to really pull everything together and make some connections between the different types of equations and representations that we've been working with, with throughout this, that we've been working with throughout this module. So today we are going to work on writing both recursive and explicit equations for arithmetic and geometric sequences. Now this is largely a recap video of everything that we've learned over the last few tasks. And today what we're going to go do is go through a few examples where we're going to look at one problem with each of the different representations that we've studied. So as a preview of what's coming up, we're going to look at what we should do and what are some strategies we should use if we are given a graph and asked to write recursive and explicit equations. What should we do if we're given a table and asked to write recursive and explicit equations? What should we do if we're given a visual and we're asked to write recursive and explicit equations? And what should we do if we're given a scenario and we're asked to write recursive and explicit equations? So this is a recap, but the the difference today is that we're writing both kinds of equations at the same time, and we are also going to be looking at every type of representation we can be given. Let's kick it off with a graph. So before I'm going to write any equations here, I'm going to make some observations about what I'm seeing. The first thing I'm noticing about this graph is that the points do not make a straight line. Now, based on that observation, I'm going to note that this is going to be a geometric sequence with a common ratio, which means we're going to be using multiplication. The other thing I'm going to note is that the equation, the explicit equation, should use an exponent because anytime we have a geometric sequence, we're going to have multiplication, which is going to use an exponent. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to realize that in order to write these equations, it's much more helpful to have numbers versus just having a graph. So the first strategy we're going to talk about is that whenever you don't have a table of values, we should always start by making a table of values. Now I'm going to make my table right next to the graph. So I'm going to have x for my input and f of x for my output. The reason I'm going to use x and f of x is that it doesn't give me any other variables to use here. Unlike in the, in the next problem where it's got term number and value, in which case I might use v and n, but here there's no variables specified, so x and f of x will be just fine for what we need to do. Now, when I make this table of values, I'm going to list the inputs and the outputs that I know. So based on this graph, the first point would have an input of 1 and an output of 2. The next point would be an input of 2 and an output of 4. Next we would have, and you know what, I'm actually going to make these all just so I can use the colors to show connections, 2 and 4. The next one would have an input of 3 and an output of 8. And then last but not least, we would have an input of 4 and an output of 16. Now, before I write any equations, I'm going to just look for the pattern because I'm going to need the pattern and the starting value in both types of equations that I need to write. The starting value here is 1, 2. And the pattern seems to be that I am multiplying by 2 each time. Now, I'm going to give you some advice as someone who has done this lots of times. Whenever you see a graph, you got to make a table if you don't already have one, because that way you can really look at the numbers that you're working with. Now, I know that a recursive equation always starts like this, f of x is equal to 
f of x minus 1. The current output is equal to the previous output and then the pattern. So times 2. And we're always going to see the pattern at the end of a recursive equation. I also know that a recursive equation needs to specify the starting value. So I would say f of 1 is equal to 2. Now for an explicit equation, I know that I think about it a different way. So instead of going with output, output, I'm going to say the output that I want is equal to my starting output, which is 2, times 2, so that's the pattern, and I'm going to do that using an exponent, but I need to get back to 0. So because this table starts at 1, I'm going to write x minus 1 in my exponent. Now there are a couple connections I want to show you here. Starting value is at the beginning of this equation, and the starting value is specified separately in this equation. The pattern here is at the base of the exponent, and the pattern here is at the end of the equation. And I can see my starting input by looking at how I adjusted my x matches the how I started my input in the recursive equation. So there are a lot of connections between these two types of equations. Now let's say for the next problem that you're already given a table. Well, if you're already given a table, you don't need to make a table. You've already got it. So I know that the starting input is negative 1. I know that the starting output is 2. I'm going to use the variables v for value and n for term number. You could decide to use x and f. I don't care. And I'm going to look at my pattern and make some observations. So in this problem, I could tell this was a geometric sequence because the graph was curved. In this problem, I can see that the pattern is that I'm adding 4 each time. So my observation is going to be that this is an arithmetic sequence. which means it's going to have a common difference in this case of 4, which means I'm not going to use an exponent or anything like that because it's not a common ratio. For my recursive equation, I know that every recursive equation is going to start like this. V of n is equal to V of n minus 1. The current output is equal to the previous output and then plus or minus my pattern, in this case plus 4. Again, we see the pattern at the end of this equation and my starting value would be v of negative 1 is equal to 2. So there is my starting value. For an explicit equation, I'm going to say every output, so v of n, is equal to, now I'm going to start with 2, and I'm going to add 4, and now to get back to 0, I'm going to have to put n plus 1. Now again, there are connections here. So the plus 4 is at the end of this equation, and the plus 4 is attached to the variable in this equation. The starting value is specified at the end here with our starting value. The starting value is the, the number that's not attached to the variable. Now you'll notice I'm not saying that the starting number is always first because one of the other things we need to realize is that some people reverse the order in which they write this equation. Now this is not something we've talked about before, but it's going to be important for some of the things that are coming up next. So I just want you to start thinking about this a little bit. Instead of writing 2 plus 4 parentheses n plus 1, another way to write this equation would be 4 parentheses n plus 1 and then pl the plus 2 at the end. Either way, you'll notice it's the same stuff. You just flippy floppy the order in the equation. So thus the pattern is still whatever is attached to the n, and the starting value is whatever is not attached to the n or the x or the input variable. 
Okay, let's take a look at what we do if we have a visual. So what I'm looking at when I see this visual is that we have dots that are growing, but it's really hard for me to make any observations about this till I really think about this in terms of numbers. So I'm gonna tell you my first step here would be to make a table. I'm gonna use X and F of X because I'm not told any specific um, variables I need to use. On day one, there are six dots. On day two, there are 12 dots. And on day three, there are three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24 dots. Now, once I see those numbers, the pattern becomes much more obvious. So that's why my recommendation is always make a table of values if you don't have one. We did that with our graph and we're gonna do that with our visual. Once I see this table, I can see that the pattern is that I'm multiplying by two each time, which means I can say that this is a geometric sequence. which means that I can say that there's gonna be a common ratio, in this case, two. It also tells me I need to use an exponent in my explicit equation. So all kinds of good stuff, kind of just based on the pattern, some initial observations. For my recursive, I know it's always gonna start with f of x is equal to f of x minus one, so my previous output, and then whatever the pattern is, in this case, times two. I also know I need to specify my starting value. So f of one is equal to six. Now for my explicit equation, I would say any output, so f of x is equal to, now I'm gonna start with six, and I'm gonna multiply by two, and I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna have to adjust to get back to zero because this table does not start at zero. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna write x minus one to get back to zero. Again, you're gonna notice the multiplication here, the multiplication here, the starting value here, the starting value here, the starting input here, the starting input here. So these equations are connected. There's a lot of things that overlap because they're describing the same pattern that we're looking at. Last but not least, how do we handle a written scenario? It says Jax the dog wants his owners to keep buying him chew toys. He starts with four chew toys and he thinks that if he continues to be a good boy, his owners will buy him three new chew toys each month. Now, a couple things. Um, before I do anything else here, just like with a graph and just like with a pattern, a visual pattern, if you don't have a table, I would make a table. So I'm gonna have X and I'm gonna have F of X. Now I need to read through this information carefully to figure out my starting value. It says he started with four chew toys. So zero, after for zero months, I'm just gonna have four chew toys. Now he's hoping he's gonna get a few more. So for the next month, after one month, he's gonna hope he's gonna get three more, three more each month. So I'm gonna say one, seven. And if I keep adding three, I'm gonna have two, 10, three, 13. And I'm using that plus three pattern to fill in the table. Now, based on that table, it's a little easier to kind of uh, make some observations. So my first observation is that this is going to be an arithmetic sequence. It's going to have a common difference of plus three, which means I'm going to write my recursive equation, which is going to start with f of x is equal to f of x minus one. and then my pattern, which is plus three. My starting value is gonna be f of zero equals four. Now for my explicit equation, I'm gonna start with f of x is equal to, now the pattern is start with four, add three, and this time our table already starts with zero. So we can just put X here. We don't need to adjust to get back to zero.
Now, what's important to realize is that just like in our previous explicit arithmetic pattern, the plus three here and the plus three here match. And the three here will not always be the second number in the equation. A lot of people actually write these equations like this. You'll see this pretty often. They'll just kind of flip flop these things and they'll write three X plus four. But even though the three is not always last, the pattern, the repeating number is the one that has the variable attached to it because the variable says do this lots of times. So that plus three is going to be next to the variable. The starting value is going to be specified here, at the beginning here, and at the end here. And you'll notice that because we started with zero, there's a zero here, there's just an X, and there's just an X. We don't need to adjust it to get back to zero. All right, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching, and I hope that I get to see you soon.